I am Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I am preparing today to go to one of my yards where I have quite a few single colonies and some of those may be ready to add the second uh, deep box onto them. Because in the process of growing those hives, initially we let them grow from one deep to two deeps before bringing them back down to one deep later in a few in uh, another month or two. So. Um, Credit to Ian Stepler here of a Canadian beekeeper's blog who um, uses this, this method. I've learned a, a lot of what I'm um, doing with single colony management from, from him. Um, but I'll show you how the uh, second super is laid out for expanding the brood chamber from a single deep to a double deep before going back down to a single deep. So I've got the empty supers here. And in the, initially, what I'll be doing is some frames of, a couple of frames of foundation on the outside edges. And just to leave myself with a bit of room. I'll only put two here, but I'm gonna put two here. But right now I'll leave myself a bit of room by not putting this fourth one in. Then I'll use empty frames of drawn comb that we cleaned out from dead hives earlier. I'm going to put four of those in the middle. A little bit of hint of mold on them. The bees will clean that right up. There's nothing to worry about there. Okay, so that's four empties in the middle. Then I'll put a couple of frames of resources around that mixture of honey and pollen or just honey because the bottom brood chamber should have all the pollen they need initially. So a bit of honey there. A lot of honey there. And I'll finish it off by putting another frame of foundation in there. And so what will happen is, as that colony gets put on top of a, brood, a going concern brood chamber, the bees are going to move up into these empty combs here, and the queen will they'll start to clean it up within 24 hours, and probably within 48 hours, the queen will be laying up here, as long as the weather conditions are adequate. So it's, it should be exactly the same as if we were reversing the brood chambers. It wants to be warm, a big cluster, and it wants to be warm weather. Now we've got a spell of warm weather coming, by that I mean in the 60s, and at night it doesn't get below 40. So that's a good, good area to aim at for doing the expansion of the brood chamber. So I'll put this to one side and set up another. Clean out the dead bees, etc. Some honey. Honey here and here. Come with a lot more honey in it. And some frames of foundation. These uh, frames of foundation have had a lot of, I used to buy, buy these in bulk a long while ago, but I never realized the importance of how much wax plays on the, on the, on the uh, acceptance by the bees. So these have been triple coated with wax, which is really important. A single coating of wax on a plastic foundation like this is not really enough. If, it, if you have single coating of wax, or if you have combs like this that have been in a hive for a while and haven't been built on, it's best to paint them over with wax. And I'll show you that in a future video. In fact, it sounds like a video I can do the next rainy weekend. So, this one's ready to go.
assuming these colonies today are the same as the ones I looked at yesterday, I probably won't need to be putting many of these on, but I will need to probably within a week. Those uh, frames of brood I've got going there, uh, basically for every frame of capped brood that you have going in a hive, the, I would say that when they emerge, if it's a full frame of capped brood, it's those bees are going to cover another three combs. That's in addition to the nurse bees that are already in there. So for every one frame of brood, it could turn into three frames of bees. Now at this time of year, there's an exception to that. Number one, a lot of the bees are dying off. So on that basis, you work more like for every home frame of brood, it's about two frames of bees they'll cover up, say during April. May, it's a different matter because we've already replaced the dying bees. And then finally, um, if the frames are not full of capped brood, you've got to scale it down as well. So I would say that for all those frames of broods that I saw yesterday, on the whole, they're going to cover at least another frame and a half of bees in the coming weeks, accounting for the bees that are going to die off and the fact that those frames weren't full. So whereas I think I averaged about three uh, frames of brood on each hive this week, I would say by middle of next week we're talking something like five frames of brood. So that's a lot of bees in there. So we shall see. I will uh, take these built up supers and take them to my next yard and have a look. So I've brought a few of the uh, made-up boxes just in case a lot of these sing some of these singles need to have a second super put on them. But we'll have a look now and see if they are ready to expand. If there are any more advanced in the hives in Hamden. Well, if the first box I'm opening is anything to go by, I didn't bring enough supers because inside here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seams of bees are full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seams of bees. This box is absolutely full of bees. So, if I can confirm. We've got a good brood chamber going on here. We're going to put a sec second deep on here. And there's still plenty of weight honey-wise. They've eaten all the pollen patty. This is this is uh, sugar. So this is a winter patty, a couple of winter patties. Certainly getting eaten up. full of honey Also full of honey, but opening up the middle. Mm -hmm. 
here's our queen. Just here. And it's full of eggs and young larvae. Wally and the third comb in. First frame of brood. Second frame of brood getting capped here on this side. And a mixture of cap brood in the middle, pollen around the edges, interspersed with younger brood in there. Second frame of brood. As the colony has more bees, it can cover more comb and keep each comb warmer. And the more warmer they can keep it, provided they've got food resources, etc., they can raise more and more brood. So we've got lots of pollen in here, some cap, plenty of cap brood, some of which is emerging. Like the other hives, it's an interspersed pattern. It's not a solid pattern of brood. And again, big mixture of cap brood on this comb. Even some drones cells. The frame is really full of brood on this one. The frame of brood. Fourth frame of brood. A fifth frame of brood. I expect the next time the queen goes round, there's going to be a much more solid pattern of brood in here. And the sixth frame of brood. Even heavier with brood, this frame. It's just a queen cup. Uh, we've got eggs in this, and there's some brood emerging here, and some eggs in here. So we've actually got seven frames of brood in this deep box. Without question, it's big enough to uh, go ahead and put a stick another box on. No question at all. So I'm going to move everything this way and put that frame of honey at the far side. Because if anything clusters slightly this way. So, winter patty, we'll just let them eat that up. We'll put a pollen patty in. And 
and this hive is getting a second deep. So, just remind what I did just before. Two frames of foundation, frame of honey, drawn comb for these four, but no honey in to speak of, frame of honey, and two more frames of foundation. And the bees are gonna come up here, start cleaning these frames up, and the queen will be laying up here within a few days. And I don't even think I'm going to put that feeder back on. I'm just going to put the cover back on this time. You know they've got plenty of honey. So. Good start, good start. If I recall right, I don't think this is a particularly strong hive. Even though it went into the winter pretty big. I stand corrected. That's why you write down notes so you remember which hives are strong and which hives are weak. I went into this hive thinking it was a relatively weak hive. Doesn't look that way. Make it a bit easier. Plenty of honey. Brood probably predominantly over here, but I see bees thickly down in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, even the outside one. Eight seams. And look at that. They're even well into this box, this yard. It's doing well. Okay, I can see, just looking at the bottom here, I've got brood in one, two, three, four, probably five at least frames here. And there's probably some brood down here. I'll look at the bottom one first. Not much going on here. There's a bit of smoke. It's all honey here.
least I'm brewed at the top of that frame. It's amazing with this deep super still full of honey down here. Cluster must have clearly gone up the middle of that side here. Clustered bean that's moved up from here into the soup frames above. We're covered with bees. Young brood here, open larvae here, and some capped brood. So the cluster's been working its way down into this area already. We're just going to make it a little easier and reverse these brood chambers. There's a lot more brood here. Just capping the brood here. You can see lots of eight-day-old larvae here, just about to be capped. So plenty of room for the queen to move into this space here. What I'm going to do shift them over just the one frame this is gonna go at the top shift this over by one frame as well because we've got lots of honey on this side. Get the cluster near the middle. Frames of honey here. Frame of just honey here. Another frame of just honey here. In fact, I'm going to move that cluster over too. Another frame of honey. Young larvae in here, lots of capped brood. In fact, some capped brood here. Nice solid pattern here. Don't want it to get too chilled, so I'm being relatively quick. It's not as warm as it was yesterday, at least not yet. Lots of cat brood, drone cells. But when they're rearing drones already, it's a good sign. Lots of open larvae there, swimming in royal jelly. I'll be 
be quick. Lots of royal jelly in those cells. Hope you can see it in the videos. Eggs over on this side. See why the black background helps a lot to see those eggs. I'm going to do is actually I'm going to move the brood over and more brood here. I've got four frames of brood on this, this one here. I'm going to take out another. One frame of honey over here on this side. brood downstairs here from the other hive. about seven frames of brood in here and five to six frames of brood in this one. This is something you like to see in the bee yard. Compared to the yard at home, where it's just too early to reverse those brood chambers, in this yard, 
it's time to reverse the brood chambers. I've only gone through seven hives so far, and of those seven, two had two, uh, two deeps, and I reversed them. One was a small hive, which was at seven frames of bees, but not quite big enough to reverse. And the other four were single brood chambers with five to seven frames of brood, a box full of bees, and needed that deep super. And I've only brought four with me, and I've got another 13 to go. Uh, and then I've got another bee yard in the area, which should be of similar strength. So I've got to get, get home, get some more brood boxes made up, and get back here. It's uh, spring has come and I'm instantly behind with the work. Once you hit that point, it's time to really get moving because you've got to get the box on every single hive because otherwise I'm going to end up with swarms by the 1st of May and no one wants that. So, time to get busy. Spring has arrived, it's official. At least in this yard, it's time to uh, take insulation off, reverse brood chambers, put insulation back on if you can, but reverse the brood chambers or get extra supers on um, for in the brood chamber anyway, because they're starting to outgrow it. Woohoo! It's not everybody's yard's going to be like that. These bees had pollen substitute fed to them about four weeks ago, uh, maybe three and three weeks ago and we had very good conditions to uh, develop the brood nest. So uh, uniformly this yard has been, has really developed well. In contrast, my yard in Hamden, which was probably fed only four or five days later, the capped brood, or most of the co colonies are full of capped brood, which hasn't emerged yet. So there isn't quite that number of bees in there. And that's why I think maybe in three, four days, maybe a week, they'll be ready to have the super added. So it's kind of good to have them spread out a little bit. My question is, what are my other five yards going to be like? So a lot of work to be done. But off to a promising start. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. If you like this video and you want to see more instructional videos as we go through the spring, please press subscribe. Please share the video, like the video, comment on the video. I appreciate the feedback, and I'll be making more in response to all of those comments. Thanks a lot. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.